WWE presents Backlash. After weeks and weeks of anticipation, we have finally arrived at our first WWE 2K22 Universe Mode Pay-Per-View. Welcome inside Detroit, Michigan, and welcome to Backlash. Eight great matches lined up coming your way this evening, including the Intercontinental Championship on the line between the defending champion Shinsuke Nakamura and his opposing challenger, the Celtic Warrior and number one contender, Sheamus. The charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy seeks retribution after not one, but two assaults from the changed and frustrated Prince, Finn Balor. Six men have earned the opportunity to enter an elimination challenge tonight, but only one man can be the last man standing in the sole survival and be the first and new cruiserweight champion of the world. Will the score be settled between Murphy along with Seth Rollins against the man who has been a thorn in their side for weeks, Mustafa Ali, plus a partner of Ali's choosing? The WWE World Tag Team Championships will be defended by Eric and Ivar, the Viking Raiders against the former champions looking to regain the gold, Riddle and Randy Orton, RK Bro. One year and one day later after their WrestleMania main event, Sasha Banks and Bianca Blair will do battle once again inside the squared circle with the Women's World Championship of the WWE on the line. And in the main event, he earned the right to call himself number one contender. It's the phenomenal AJ Styles going one-on-one -on -one with the almighty WWE Champion, Bobby Lashley. Who will walk away from Detroit holding the richest prize in the business today? We will find out right here, right now, tonight at Backlash. But let's get things underway with an open challenge issued by a man who makes it look just too easy in the ring. This is Apollo Crews kicking us off right here tonight. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Bidway State, Nigeria. Weighing in at 241 pounds. Apollo Crews! So we kick things off this evening with an open challenge issued by Apollo Crews this past week on Raw. This is coming after two losses in recent in recent time from Apollo Crews. First a few weeks ago, he lost in the middle of the ring to the current reigning Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura. And then this past Monday night on Raw, he lost in pretty embarrassing and quick fashion to the charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy, who was just fired up after his recent issues from Finn Balor. After those two losses, Apollo Crews stated he wanted to get on the pay-per-view. He issued an open challenge right here tonight. He's looking to get his career back on track. You know Apollo Crews is no slouch in the ring. He's a former champion, which we'll discuss throughout this contest. But I'm very interested to see who is going to be the opponent that accept the, accepts Apollo Crews' open challenge here tonight. There's a locker room full of superstars. Many people would love to get on the Backlash card tonight. Who is it going to be stepping in the ring with Apollo Crews? And I think we know who this is. Get a load of this. And his opponent from Birmingham, England, weighing in. 205 pounds, the Bruiser Weight, Pete Dunn. The Bruiser Weight, Pete Dunn from NXT, making his main roster debut here tonight, has accepted Apollo Cruz's open challenge. What a way to kick off Backlash. This is going to be a good one. Pete Dunn is a former NXT United Kingdom Champion, held that title for well over a year. He is also a former NXT Tag Team Champion, one of the roughest, one of the toughest, and dare I say one of the most innovative with that style in recent years inside the squared circle. They don't call him the bruise away for nothing. He will pick your body apart, limb by limb, bone by bone, and leave you a broken man inside of that ring. This is definitely not what Apollo Crews was expecting when he laid out this open challenge. A man from NXT to step up, jump to the main roster, and face him in the middle of this ring right here, right now. What a way to kick off our first Universe Mode pay-per-view. The bell has sounded and we are underway. This is going to be a great night of action as Apollo Crews is going to look at, going to, look at to take it to Pete Dunne as soon as possible here. Apollo Crews, he issued the open challenge. He had no idea who his opponent was going to be up until moments ago. He found out when we did, and Pete Dunne, what a surprise here tonight, making his NXT 
or I should say main roster debut from NXT. Definitely got to be throwing Apollo Crews off his game. I'm sure Apollo Crews was scouting the locker room, seeing who is available from the main roster to compete against him here tonight. But somebody from NXT, I'm sure, was not on his radar. Pete Dunne, as we mentioned, one of the roughest and toughest inside that ring. They call him the Bruiser Ray because he will absolutely destroy your body inside the squared circle. He'll pick apart your limbs, your fingers, your neck. He'll just beat you down in that ring. And Apollo Crews, look at this. Small package here looking to get the quick victory over the Bruiser Ray for Pete Dunne. Get able to get the shoulder up early. As Apollo Crews, you see he's been on the offense the last few minutes. He's clearly trying to put, a, or excuse me, put Pete Dunne away as fast as possible. He misscouted that elbow now. Now Pete Dunne, the bruiser weight, looks to take control. What a surprise here to kick off what is going to be a great night of action coming your way. We have been building to this for nearly five weeks. Our first universe mode pay-per-view backlash. An absolutely stacked card. Eight matches, including this one, on the horizon tonight. Cannot wait for some of our championship matches later this evening. The Intercontinental title going to be on the line. Shinsuke Nakamura taking on the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus. What about the rematch that many people have been waiting for on a stage like this? Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks for the WWE Women's Championship. That's going to be a great matchup. And of course, the main event. Oh, look at this real quick. Pete Dunne, suplex, turns Apollo Crews inside out. What a drop. And that is no light man, Apollo Crews. A heavyweight in that ring. Pete Dunne able to get him off the ground, flip him inside out. Apollo Crews taking a hard landing from that maneuver by Pete Dunne. But as we were mentioning, of course, in tonight's main event, it'll be the WWE Championship, the richest prize in our business today, on the line as the almighty Bobby Lashley, a man who has been dominant for the better part of a year as the WWE Champion, will put the title up inside of the ring against a man who earned himself the right to call himself the number one contender in that WWE Championship number one contenders tournament over the last few weeks the phenomenal AJ Styles it's going to be a great main event among other matches here tonight that is just a taste of what we are going to see throughout this evening As Pete Dunn is unloading on Apollo Crews we're getting a showcase of just how Pete Dunn can beat you down in that ring you see him raking at the eyes of Apollo Crews ain't necessarily the uh Legalist move in the Bucks, but I guess if he ain't breaking no rules necessarily, it's all well and good. Look at this, he's going for it again. Apollo, this is what I'm talking about, man. Pete Dunne, he'll pick a part, and he'll pick, or excuse me, he'll pick a body part, and he'll just absolutely pick you apart. He'll beat you down inside the ring. That's why he's the WWE United Kingdom champion for the better part of a year. Oh, look at this, Pete Dunne, he's got Apollo Crews hooked. He's looking for that pump handle slam like maneuver. And Apollo Crews goes face first into the canvas below. And Pete Dunne gets the victory. Pete Dunne in short faction. What a debut here on the main roster. Apollo Crews issuing this open challenge. Pete Dunne from NXT surprising everybody here tonight. In debut faction, or I should say in beautiful fashion in his debut. Making a showcase for himself against Apollo Crews here tonight. What a win in his main roster debut. Kicking us off here at Backlash for the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne. Apollo Crews gave it his here all. Here is your winner, the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne. I cannot wait to see what Pete Dunne does on the main roster. What a big win against Apollo Crews here. Kick us off at our first Universe Mode pay-per-view. The Bruiserweight has arrived. What is now time for our next contest here tonight at Backlash. We're going to keep things rolling with the six-pack challenge. Elimination style for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Who's going to walk out the new Cruiserweight Champion? The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Making his way to the ring from Tacoma, Washington, weighing in at 201 pounds, Isaiah Swerve Scott. The Swerve himself, Isaiah Scott, qualified for this matchup by defeating Drew Gulak on Monday Night Raw a few weeks ago. All six men that will compete for the Cruiserweight Championship here tonight 
earned the right to do so in qualifying matches over the past couple of weeks on Raw and Main Event, so every man deserving of the spot that they got in this six-pack challenge. Elimination style. It's going to take five men exiting the ring for there to be a new winner and a new Cruiserweight Champion here tonight on the pay-per-view. And here comes your next combatant. This is Mansoor joining the fray. Mansoor defeated Jordan Devlin to qualify for this matchup a couple of weeks ago on WWE Main Event. It's a great matchup. Go check it out if you missed it as he makes his way to the ring. And from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, weighing in at 175 pounds, Mansoor! Will the young and up-and-coming king of Saudi Arabia, Mansoor, stake his claim tonight and make a name for himself and become the new Cruiserweight Champion, the title that is currently vacant. We will have a new champion as we leave Backlash here tonight. Isaiah Swerve Scott Mansoor, your first two to enter of the six that will compete in what I am sure is going to be an exciting contest between six of the greatest cruiserweights wrestling in our business today. Next up, from Lucha House Party, we have Grand Metalik. It was a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw where Grand Metalik defeated Arya Davari in singles action. And that is how he qualified for this matchup here tonight. Representing Lucha House Party from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Weighing in at 175 pounds, Grand Metalik! Grand Metalik getting a big opportunity here tonight, but he is no stranger to big matches. Remember the original Cruiserweight Classic all those years ago, Grand Metalik was a finalist in that tournament. He may have came up short and he may have never held the Cruiserweight Championship here in the WWE, but he has been in there with some of the best, including one of his opponents tonight, Rey Mysterio. They faced off one-on-one -on -one a number of years ago on Monday Night Raw inside Madison Square Garden. It was absolutely one of the biggest matches, if not the biggest match, of Grand Metal League's career up until now. But next up, speaking of luchadors, we have a man who's looking to change the face of Lucha Libre, representing Legato Del Fantasma. This is former champion himself, Santos Escobar. And representing Legado del Fantasma from Mexico City, Mexico, weighing in at 200 pounds, Santos Escobar. When we kicked off a new era here in the WWE a number of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, Santos Escobar was the first man to qualify for this matchup when he made an emphatic statement, defeating a veteran of the ring and former Cruiserweight Champion, V. Brian Kendrick, inside the squared circle. Santos Escobar has been at the top of the mountain before. He has been Cruiserweight Champion down in NXT. But now with the WWE officially reinstating the Cruiserweight Championship, a vacant title is up for grabs, and Santos Escobar is looking to come out of this contest a two-time Cruiserweight Champion of the World. But no easy task in front of him, as we've mentioned. He's got five of the top cruiserweight wrestlers going today, standing across from him in that ring. There's going to be no easy task for no man in this matchup to walk out with the gold here tonight. Including someone as talented as the man who is entering now. He won the last chance triple threat match a couple of weeks ago against Jordan Devlin, as well as Angel Garza on main event. This is the one and only... Ricochet looking to win the championship for the very first time. And from Paducah, Kentucky, weighing in at 190 pounds, Ricochet! This is Ricochet's comeback story. This is a man who is NXT North American Champion. He's been United States Champion. A couple of weeks ago on Raw, he lost in the first round of the number one contenders tournament against AJ Styles. He then won that last chance triple threat, as we mentioned on WWE Main Event, to secure the final spot in this six-man matchup here tonight. It was a great contest. He barely survived, but he picked up an impressive victory over Jordan Devlin and Angel Garza. Ricochet has never been the Cruiserweight Champion. He's never even competed for it in the WWE. But he is one of the top junior heavyweight cruiserweight wrestlers in the world and has been for many years. Will he be the new champion for the very first time under the WWE umbrella here tonight? But speaking of the greatest cruiserweights ever of all time, 
Here comes the greatest mask of all time, a decorated Cruiserweight Champion, former World Champion. It is great to see him competing in Cruiserweight action once again. There's the man himself, Rey Mysterio. And from San Diego, California, weighing in at 175 pounds, Rey Mysterio. You want to talk about Cruiserweight classics? Look no further than week two of the new era. On WWE Main Event, when Rey Mysterio and Angel Garza opened the show with an all-timer matchup against each other. It was like watching Rey Mysterio fight Eddie Guerrero back in the day, man. It was a classic Cruiserweight matchup where Rey Mysterio defeated Angel Garza on that night to qualify for this matchup now. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The bell has rung. Six men have entered. Only one man will leave the Cruiserweight Champion. Elimination can occur by pinfall, submission, or disqualification in this contest. But countouts will not be relevant here. And it's all, like I said, down to the last man standing to determine who will be the brand new Cruiserweight Champion. Inside of the ring right now, we're going to have a lot of action going on. We're going to keep up with it the best we can as we got... All six of these men kind of pairing off with each other right now. Mansoor, Ricochet, Santos Escobar, Rey Mysterio, Gray Manalik, and Isaiah Swerve Scott. This is going to be a great matchup here as you see Isaiah Swerve Scott with Tornado DDT. This is going to be a very interesting match strategy-wise for all the men in this ring. We got five other competitors going at you, trying to eliminate you in this matchup, sneak up on you even. Try to get the quick small package or roll up to try to eliminate you from the matchup. You gotta keep eyes in the back of your head at all times, especially in a match like this. With such high stakes, you don't want to get robbed because you weren't you know, paying attention to your opponent. And you get rolled up, a little schoolboy that eliminates you from the matchup. You gotta come into this match with strategy. You gotta pay attention here, and you may even be a smart idea to do what Santos Escobar and Isaiah Swerve Scott just did, and maybe team up. There you got the two masked competitors in the ring, Grand Metalik and Rey Mysterio. We mentioned their classic at Madison Square Garden a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of years ago, excuse me. One of the biggest matches of Grand Metalik's career. A great matchup in Rey Mysterio's recent comeback the last few years here in the WWE. As those two are going to go at it inside the square circle, another match we'd love to see one-on-one -on -one in the near future. With no countouts in this thing, it becomes almost very dangerous as well. The brawls can lead out to the outside with really any repercussions, without any repercussions. Ricochet and Mansoor are out there. Isaiah Swerve Scott is trying to catch his breath. Things get a little, little bit more dangerous on the outside of the ring as Santos Escobar goes into the cover on Graham and Elite, but he gets the shoulder up at two. As we mentioned, we're going to do our best to keep up with all the action inside the ring. And we got six cruiserweights moving fast. Going to the sky, look at Grand Metalik and Rey Mysterio, both from the top rope. Grand Metalik with a senton on Santos Escobar. Mantos, or excuse me, Mansoor, Grand Metalik with another moonsault there. And very impressive from the king of the ropes himself. All six of these men, as we mentioned, qualify for this matchup. Everyone deserves the right to be here tonight. The Cruiserweight Championship reinstated here, a part of our new era. A vacant championship, so we're going to have a very deserving champion at the top of the Cruiserweight division at the end of our night. Rey Mysterio heads to the top rope. you got to watch Grand Metal League. Look at that. That's the dangers of so many competitors being in this contest. Rey Mysterio is heading up, had his eyes set on somebody else. Grand Metal League pulls him off. Rey Mysterio takes a tumble. Now he's on the outside. You see Ricochet's down and out right now as well. As we mentioned, it's not about just doing damage on your opponent. You gotta get the pinfall, you gotta get the submission. It's all about elimination in this one. It's gonna come down to two men in that ring and they're gonna battle it out to be the final man. I'll try to eliminate the final man, I should say, inside the ring to have a cruiserweight champion, a Santos Escobar. Look at this, he's got Grand Metal leaked up and he drops him right on his head. A signature maneuver from Santos Escobar. He's into the cover on the king of the ropes. And there you hear the official announcement, Grand Metal League, the first to go in this matchup. But wait a minute. Mansoor has been eliminated. Ricochet eliminates Mansoor. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we've had six. We're down to four. Santos Escobar with the elimination 
on Grand Metal League. Ricochet with the elimination on Mansoor. Great effort by those two men, but they will not be becoming the new Cruiserweight Champion tonight as this six-man match now turns into a fatal four-way elimination for the time being. We have Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar going at it. It's a one-on-one -on -one match that I'm sure we'd all love to see, as well as the other pairing on the other side of the ring, Isaiah Swerve Scott and Ricochet. Just imagine what they could do one-on-one -on -one inside the Swerve Circles. We're getting a preview of it now. Kick to the head by Swerve Scott. As we're at a bit of a stalemate, everyone trying to recoup their strategy. You see how fast eliminations can happen in this matchup. Bodies are going to drop. Grand Metalik, a casualty in the hands of Santos Escobar, dropping him right on his head. Ricochet was able to get the pin over Mansoor. Now we are down to four inside the ring. Ricochet, meanwhile, he's hitting the ropes. We got Rey Mysterio Santos Escobar going out. Look at this, Ricochet. Oh, he crashed and burned. Nobody was home. And now Swerve Scott lays out Ricochet. Face plants him right into the map below. Mysterio's taking Santos Escobar for a tilt a wall, and he goes down. And Isaiah Scott's going for that kick again, and he delivers flush on the one and only Ricochet. Into the cover. Are we going to see another elimination? We do. Ricochet fought long and hard to qualify for this matchup, but he will unfortunately not be leaving the Cruiserweight Champion tonight. Isaiah Swerve Scott with the elimination over the one and only Ricochet, and we are down to three men just like that in this six-man matchup. We have Isaiah Swerve Scott, a former NXT North American Champion. He defeated Drew Gulak to qualify for this matchup here tonight. Oh, that's some of the I mean, Santos, excuse me, Isaiah Swerve Scott. I can't really classify him as a young buck in that ring. He's definitely been a competitor for quite a bit. A veteran in his own right, not compared to Rey Mysterio there, as I was mentioning, because he crashed and burned as Rey Mysterio got out the way on that spring boom moonsault. He goes for it again. That time he hits it. On the other hand, you got Santos Escobar, as we mentioned, the leader of Legado del Fantasma, a former cruiserweight champion in his own right. He's going to be a tough competitor to beat, and then, of course, the most legendary man in this ma in this matchup, the greatest mask of all time, without a doubt. He's had a decorated career on top of just multiple cruiserweight championship reigns, tag team championship reigns, Intercontinental, United States, World Heavyweight Champion, WWE Champion, Royal Rumble match winner. There's very few things that Rey Mysterio hasn't done in this business. He's not an easy man to keep down, but with moves like that on the outside of the ring, that is definitely going to lead you in the direction to eliminating a guy like Rey Mysterio, a superstar of his caliber. Going to hurt even more on the outside of the ring. you got to respect the hustle of Isaiah Swerve Scott on that maneuver. And honestly, Santos Escobar has got the right idea right now. He's sitting back and he's watching Swerve Scott and Rey Mysterio battle it out. You see, he now goes to the outside as Isaiah makes his way back into the ring. So does Rey Mysterio. Santos Escobar is playing the long game here. you got to respect it. Whether you like the strategy or not, you want him to get in there, but at the same time, with eliminations can occur at any moment, a multi-person matchup. Santos Escobar is letting Isaiah Swerve Scott and Rey Mysterio exhaust themselves against each other. And he might just be there to pick the bones to whoever eliminates the other. And look at this. Swerve Scott putting Rey Mysterio on the top rope. Or should be the middle rope. Kicks the knees out, and he hits it with a double stop. That is classic Swerve Scott there. Mysterio is down. He is hurting off that kick to the knee. There's a drop kick to the back. What a great matchup we have seen so far tonight. We are two matches in. Backlash has already been exciting. And this Cruiserweight Championship match is certainly living up to expectations. Seeing some classic Cruiserweight action in this contest as Isaiah Swerve Scott heads to the top rope. Look at this. 450 splash, but Rey Mysterio got the knees up. Rey with the knees up and smart move to kick out the leg. Of Swerve Scott there. Now Rey Mysterio going to the top rope. As Santos Escobar looks on. Mysterio. Look at that. Horakonorana. Beautiful. From the greatest mask of all time. I wonder when Santos is going to get in here. I'm sure, like, I, like as we mentioned, he's probably waiting for the next elimination to strike. As Rey hits another Hurricane Rana. He's going to the top rope once more. It is the greatest mask of all time. Going to be walking away with another accolade here tonight. Another Cruiserweight Championship run. He drops an elbow. He got Swerve Scott. He didn't get all of it, but he got just enough to keep him down. 
Rey Mysterio is going back to his roots here tonight. He's one of the greatest high flyers of all time. And he has certainly proven that once again. He's going to look back into his WCW days. As Mysterio with a splash. As a signature splash has won Rey Mysterio many a championships over the years. But look at this. Santos Escobar looking to take advantage and eliminate Swerve Scott himself. Oh, Isaiah got the shoulder off. That was a close call. But Santos Escobar. As Rey Mysterio is resting his wounds here. He's got Swerve Scott on his shoulders. Phantom Driver from the leader of Legado Del Fantasma. And Swerve Scott, you see the shoulders flicked up there. Rey Mysterio is already back into it. Oh man, super kick by Santos Escobar. He goes back into the cover. He gets the shoulders up. Santos Escobar picking his spots in this matchup. You see he's trying to... Move a little faster now. Rey Mysterio and Isaiah Swerve Scott going at it the last few minutes. He's trying to take advantage of wounded animals in this ring. Oh, look at this. He's cradling Rey Mysterio up, and he drops him. Or are we going to see a big elimination for Isaiah Swerve Scott here? Or should be by Santos Escobar as Isaiah Swerve Scott stares on here. He's been at a triple threat matchup. I should say elimination three-way dance for the last couple of minutes. Ray Menelik and Mansoor went early. Ricochet went just a few minutes ago. And we've been down with these three for the last few minutes. They are hanging in here for the long haul tonight. As Swerve Scott may have just put the exclamation point on the elimination of Escobar. But he gets the shoulder up. What a matchup we are seeing out of these men. Got to give credit to the other three as well that we just mentioned that were eliminated earlier on. Credit goes to all six men that earned their right to be here tonight. We knew this wasn't going to be an easy matchup for anybody involved. And so far, these are your later round survivors. Rey Mysterio down the outside momentarily. We got Santos Escobar and Swerve Scott in the ring as he slams him down below. Look at this, Isaiah's he's wounded. Santos Escobar's got him up on the shoulders. I think I know what he's going for. Drops him right on his head. That is an emphatic maneuver. Isaiah Swerve Scott may be knocked out cold. That's going to be elimination there. No. How the hell did Isaiah Swerve Scott get the shoulder up? Santos Escobar pulling out his best offense. But Isaiah is not looking to leave empty handed here tonight. And even if he does not, I should say, come out with, the, with his hand held high, he got to give credit. So Isaiah Swerve Scott here tonight. I mean, you got to give credit to all of these men, but he is putting up an impressive performance. He has scaved away from elimination a couple of times here, especially off that flurry of offense from Santos Escobar a few moments ago. Santos is down. Rey Mysterio is on the apron here. He's heading back in there. We're going back, back to where we were a few minutes ago with Scott and Mysterio going one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see who's going to be the man who survives this battle. Look at that cutter. Rey Mysterio eats canvas, and he eats a double stop as well. Isaiah's feeling it over Rey Mysterio. Mysterio low, look at this, this is a classic Rey offense. Tilt to world, takes Isaiah for a roller coaster ride, and he's down in the canvas. Mysterio's headed to the top, he could be looking for possibly a signature splash. No, Isaiah's too far away. He's gonna roll out, that's smart work, or smart work I should say by Isaiah Swerve Scott. Ray's right there. Isaiah was still dazed. He was awake enough to roll out. Give him credit for that. A little bit of ring awareness there to roll away from where Ray Mysterio was. But Ray is still in control. As Santos Escobar going to get his hands dirty here. First got to the outside. He holds on. Mysterio back in there. Look at this. Takes him down below. Man, what a match we are witnessing here. Mysterio. DDT. Down goes Isaiah Swerve, Scott Santos, Escobar to look to pick up the scraps. No, man. Isaiah is still in this matchup. As we now head to Santos Escobar versus Rey Mysterio. A little bit of singles action between these two men. I just have no idea what it's going to take as he cradles, cradles Rey Mysterio up again. That's got to do it. No, Rey Mysterio gets the shoulder up. I'm almost in shock. These guys are taking a lot of damage as we get into the late rounds. These are championship rounds right now for these men in this matchup. And they are still holding on. As Rey Mysterio hits a freaking Canadian Destroyer on Santos Escobar. 
I was about to mention, I can't say I'm surprised that Rey Mysterio is holding on after all the accolades we mentioned earlier. He's still in this matchup, but Isaiah Swerve Scott might have just handed him the KO punch. That does it. Rey Mysterio is gone. That is a huge pickup in this matchup for Isaiah Swerve Scott, but the damage is not done. As we are down to Santos Escobar and Isaiah Swerve Scott in this matchup, as he just nailed Isaiah off that with that kick and the Phantom Driver. Isaiah may be down and out for the count. That does it. And we have a new cruiserweight champion. Santos Escobar survives the six-man fray. He is the last man standing, and he is the new cruiserweight champion of the world. What a cruiserweight showcase here tonight at Backlash. Here is your winner and the new WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Santos Escobar. Like him or not, it was an absolutely earned victory by the leader of Legado Del Fantasma. Santos Escobar reigns atop the cruiserweight division once more as the new cruiserweight champion of the world. Let's keep things rolling here tonight. We got a little bit of a grudge match coming up between the Prince, Finn Balor, and the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. And here comes the man who's been sporting a fresh coat of paint as of late. A new attitude for the Prince. And there he is. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, from Gray County, Wicklow, Ireland. Weighing in at 190 pounds, Finn Balor! Well, let's take you back to a couple of weeks ago and show you how this situation began between these two men. It was on Monday Night Raw, Jeff Hardy, Finn Balor, a little singles competition just for the sake of competition on Monday Night Raw. Jeff Hardy with that moonsault right there, picture perfect picking up a quick victory over Finn Balor. Impressive fashion. It was a great matchup. But after the matchup, Finn Balor pent up aggression after a couple of losses stringing together in a row. Took it out on Jeff Hardy with absolutely just unnecessary and ridiculous beatdown, especially with these steel chair shots as you're seeing here. Just cracking Jeff Hardy multiple times with the cold hard steel. And we heard from Finn Balor on Monday Night Raw basically saying it was time for a change and we we talked about how Jeff Hardy may have just been in the wrong place at the wrong time here you see this past Monday night on Raw Jeff Hardy after a win over Apollo Crews Finn Balor was not done as he took the fight to Jeff Hardy from behind once again Jeff Hardy we rumored he may have just been in the wrong place at the wrong time Jeff Hardy took it personally he wanted a rematch against Finn Balor here tonight and he's getting it and after that got announced, Finn Balor setting his mark and sending a message to Jeff Hardy one more time after his victory this past Monday Night on Raw. Finn has been frustrated after a string of losses led him to nothing but defeat and led him to that beatdown on Jeff Hardy. So he can look to get his career back on track here tonight as Jeff Hardy is seeking nothing more than retribution and redemption over the Prince Finn Balor. As here comes the charismatic enigma and a former WWE champion himself, Jeff Hardy, is seeking revenge here tonight at Backlash. This is going to be a good one, folks. Strap in. You don't want to miss it. And his opponent from Cameron, North Carolina, weighing in at 225 pounds, Jeff I am pumped up for this matchup as a couple of weeks ago before Finn Balor's unnecessary attack on Jeff Hardy. We witnessed a great matchup between two competitors. It was basically an exhibition matchup for the sake of competition after Finn Balor had lost two matches in a row, won the Shinsuke Nakamura and won alongside Shinsuke Nakamura in tag team action against Sheamus and Jinder Mahal. That was on WWE main event and then Jeff Hardy had lost to Damian Priest in the first round of the WWE number one contenders tournament, WWE Championship number one contenders tournament a couple of weeks ago as well. Management pinning together Finn Balor and Jeff Hardy, two fan favorites to go one on one to see who could put the momentum back in their corner. On that night, Jeff Hardy was the better man, but the string of losses got the best of Finn Balor and he absolutely snapped 
and he has given himself what we are dubbing a fresh coat of paint and a new attitude for the Prince to help him get a little edge back and possibly help him get some wins in his corner as this matchup begins right here, right now with Backlash. I expect to see a more aggressive side of the Prince here tonight. Somebody who's probably going to take the fight to Jeff Hardy just a little bit more, not play things so easy. Inside the squared circle, he's certainly not in the ring with somebody he respects. So if that were the case, we would have never seen the chair shots a few weeks ago. We probably would have never been getting this rematch right here tonight. If you like the actions of Finn Balor, and you like the recent history of the Prince, you got to respect his, comp or excuse me, his competition and his abilities in that ring. We know Finn Balor can take the fight. We know he has all the tools to get the job done, especially over somebody like Jeff Hardy. Finn Balor's been the Intercontinental Champion. He was the first ever Universal Champion. He was the NXT Champion on multiple occasions. But if Finn Balor feels the need to turn a new page in his career, and Jeff Hardy's just first on the hit list, and so be it. We'll see how things work out for Finn Balor, and if a new attitude is what he needed to get back in the winning ways here tonight. But Jeff Hardy, as he goes to the top rope, we know he doesn't want to give Finn Balor the satisfaction of a victory here on pay-per-view as Jeff Hardy comes with the missile drop kick. Jeff Hardy with a lot to prove here tonight. I'm sure he wants to prove that that win, as you saw he went for that standing moonsault there, that was the move that gave him, gave him the victory over Finn Balor a couple weeks ago on Raw. But as I was about to mention, I'm sure Jeff Hardy wants to prove here tonight that that win over Finn Balor wasn't just some quick fluke off that moonsault, a move that Jeff Hardy does, but certainly not one of his signature or finisher maneuvers in this ring. And on top of all that, when somebody cracks you multiple times with a steel chair to the chest and the head and to the back, I'm sure Jeff Hardy, as we mentioned, is seeking nothing more on top of a victory than straight up retribution here tonight. What better way to get retribution over Finn Balor than to hand him what caused all this in the first place, and that's yet another loss inside the squared circle. And Jeff Hardy is in good control of this matchup right now. That's a power bomb, something we don't see too often from Jeff Hardy. As he's headed to the top rope, the charismatic and even goes for a splash. But the Prince gets out of the way. Jeff Hardy eats canvas for dinner. Then just whipping Jeff into the corner there. Jeff goes down, just that missile drop kick. Like I said, man, I expect to see a more aggressive side of the Prince here tonight. Definitely be taking no shortcuts against Jeff Hardy. I should say you can't take no shortcuts against a guy like Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy has been to the top of the mountain multiple times. He's had a decorated career as a tag team competitor and a singles competitor. Well documented. Documented. I don't need to educate anybody on that. It's not going to be an easy task to put Jeff Hardy away. Especially if he starts getting into the flow and starts going high risk with high reward as he goes to the top rope here. Jeff Hardy living for the moment, waiting for Finn Balor to get to his feet. He goes for the cross body, but Finn catches him there as Finn Balor just throws Jeff Hardy down the map below. Two men had the same idea. They crash it into each other, but Finn gets the upper hand over the charismatic Enigma. We'll be very interested to see the result of this matchup. What happens to Finn Balor? What's going to be his mental state? What are his actions going to portray if he gets handed another loss by the hands of Jeff Hardy here tonight? And on the other hand, will Finn Balor wake up from this new attitude? Will he realize that that's not the case that he needs to take? Or not the road he needs to take? Not the taste. As Jeff Hardy hits a twist of fate! Jeff Hardy hitting a twist of fate. I was going to mention what's Finn Balor going to do if he gets a win here tonight. But Jeff Hardy doesn't want to see that day. Went for the elbow drop. Finn Balor gets out of the way. Now he sends Jeff Hardy to the outside. A drop kick sends Jeff down to the floor below. As Finn's bringing Jeff to the outside here. And he hits the senton. That's the same senton he hit when he turned his back on Jeff Hardy a few weeks ago. Finn delivered a statement with that maneuver, and that was going to get things a little bit more extreme up Jeff Hardy's alley, if you will, on the outside of the ring. Sending Jeff Hardy's rib cage right into the steel barricade. There may be padding there, but it's nothing but cold, hard steel underneath a thin layer of padding. That's going to take you down and out. 
And that's why Jeff Hardy is taking a moment to get to his feet here. Finn Balor's going to have to stay on the offense, though, because it's going to take a lot more to keep somebody of Jeff Hardy's superstar caliber down. As we see Finn, look at this. Striking offense from the Demon, from the Prince. It's Finn Balor scouting Jeff Hardy. Will Finn get back into the winning ways? We know how bad he wants it as he drops Jeff Hardy dead on the canvas. Finn into the cover, and you could probably count to 20 on that one. No, Jeff Hardy gets the shoulder up. I stand corrected. I thought that maneuver was going to be the lights out for Jeff Hardy, but Jeff still got fight in him. And look at that. Drop kick to the back of Finn Bauer. In the back of the neck. A bit more dangerous. He's going to get the upper hand as we reach a couple of minutes in this matchup. Fatigue starts setting in. And we know with the animosity between these guys, it's only going to make the anger and aggression go stronger. Jeff drops the legs. And Jeff Hardy's going up top where he feels most comfortable. But Finn Balor's right there. Jeff Hardy tried to go for the axe hammer. But Finn just a little bit out of the purpose there, out of the way, and hits the Pele kick. Now Finn's going to the top rope. What's he going for? But Jeff Hardy, look at this. These guys got to slow down a little bit. You see them both going for high-risk maneuvers the past few minutes. They want to hit that high-impact, high-reward, but neither man is truly in position for it. Oh, wait a minute. Jeff Hardy, what the hell? Twist of fate from the second rope. Finn Balor eats a twist of fate and barely, just barely, gets the shoulder up. I don't know how the hell Finn Balor got his shoulder up off a second rope twist of fate from Jeff Hardy. A move he delivers with such statement, with such fire. Finn Balor gets to his feet, but barely. He's dazed and confused. Jeff Hardy's got him in a predicament here. I'm sure Jeff could be feeling that swan time bomb any moment. Oh, look at that. He went for the kick to the gut. Could have been going for another twist of fate. Ooh! That time, Finn Balor hits the Pele kick, but to the back of the neck of Jeff Hardy. That was brutal to watch. Finn Balor, look at this. He's just trying to beat the hell out of Jeff now. He brings him to the canvas again. Jeff Hardy's down. He's hurting. Finn is on the top rope. Finn, coup de gras. Finn Balor delivering the exclamation point on the charismatic enigma. And Finn Balor gets the win he has been searching for over Jeff Hardy. Tonight, not the night that the charismatic enigma is going to get his vengeance, is going to get his retribution over that man right there, the Prince Finn Balor. Valiant effort by Jeff, Finn Balor showing a new side, very aggressive in this contest, and in the end, hitting Jeff Hardy with that coup de gras aids him in defeat. Or aids, or aids Jeff Hardy in defeat, but aids Finn Balor into the end of the victory. I'll wait that. Wait a minute, Finn Balor's got a steel chair. The match is over, and Finn Balor, he delivered the chair to Jeff Hardy a few weeks ago, which started all this, and Finn Balor delivering another statement here tonight. The victory wasn't enough. He wanted to put Jeff Hardy down and out. Steel chair shots, and Finn Balor is the last man standing over Jeff Hardy here tonight. We move from one grudge into another. Seth Rollins, as well as his disciple Murphy, looking to even the score against the man who has been a thorn in their side for a number of weeks, that being Mustafa Ali. A tag team match is here, a tag team match is signed. Who does Mustafa Ali choose for his tag team partner? It's time to find out, as we got tag team action on our hands. The following contest is a tag team match. Scheduled for one fall on the way to the ring at a combined weight of 430 pounds, Murphy and Seth Rollins. The Messiah Seth Rollins took on Mustafa Ali in the number one contender's WWE Championship tournament a few weeks back. On that night, Mustafa Ali, we discussed how he was looking to get his career back on track and give himself a fresh coat of paint inside of that ring. Finn Balor, or Finn Balor, we, we're still talking about Finn Balor, I can't get that steel chair shot out of my head. Mustafa Ali took the fight to Seth Rollins, 
absolutely impressed everybody and just absolutely threw Seth Rollins off his game that night on Monday Night Raw. Mustafa Ali picked up a huge win on that night and defeated Seth Rollins. And Mustafa Ali met Drew McIntyre in the semifinals. Seth Rollins ate a distraction, played his music, took Mustafa Ali's eye off the ball, and showed that he was not done with Ali. Of course, this past week on WWE Main Event, we saw Murphy go one-on-one -on -one with Mustafa Ali. Both men looking to build momentum to this tag team matchup. And on that night, Mustafa Ali with an impressive victory over that man, the Disciple Murphy. But here comes opponent number one, the man of the hour, Mustafa Ali. And their opponents first from Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 182 pounds, Mustafa Ali. Ali's got to be riding a little bit of a high after that victory over the Disciple Murphy on main event. But Seth Rollins is the main target. Seth Rollins is the man who sent a message to Mustafa Ali when he was in the ring with Drew McIntyre a couple of weeks back. As we mentioned, Drew McIntyre, he doesn't play games like that. It wasn't the victory, or I should say it wasn't the distraction from Seth Rollins that truly aided Drew McIntyre in the win that he received that night, but it certainly threw Mustafa Ali's eye off the ball for a slight moment. Mustafa Ali hasn't forgotten, and whether it was this distraction from Seth Rollins or not that aided Drew McIntyre on that night, Mustafa Ali clearly was let known that Seth Rollins Still has an issue to be taken care of. But who is joining Mustafa Ali? Who is the mystery partner? And I believe I know this music. A former ally of Mustafa Ali is stepping up. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on Dominic Dijakovic here tonight at Backlash. And his partner from Kingsboro, Massachusetts. Weighing in at 270 pounds. Dominic Dijakovic showing up here at Backlash. Former partner of Mustafa Ali in the group known as Retribution. He was labeled T-Bar by Mustafa Ali for a, a little while there, but looks like Dominic Dijakovic has gone back to his roots. He has taken off the mask. He has wiped off the paint. And it looks like him and Ali have put their differences aside and Mustafa Ali has got Dominic Dijakovic a spot on the main roster and has got him a big main event matchup here on pay-per-view. Another surprise this evening, Dominic Dijakovic going to be teaming up with Mustafa Ali right here, right now, to take on Murphy and the Messiah Seth Rollins in tag team action. This is going to be a good one. It was already looking good, but when you add Dijakovic into this thing, it just levels up just like that. As we are underway with this tag team grudge match here. Seth Rollins looking to settle his score with Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali looking to get back at Seth Rollins after the distraction a few weeks ago. Murphy has been dragged into this as the disciple. He was handed a loss by Mustafa Ali on main event. As we mentioned, those two renewing their rivalry. They got a lot of history with each other back in their cruiserweight division days. As Mustafa takes over Murphy there. Ali obviously riding the momentum into this matchup after that win on main event. Seth Rollins picking up a win on main event a couple of weeks ago, the last time Rollins was in action. Went one on one with John Morrison in a great matchup on WWE main event. He picked up the win there. But the X Factor in this one, Mustafa Ali choosing a mystery partner. That man turning out to be his old ally in the group known as Retribution. First known as Dominic Dijakovic, then dubbed T-Bar at one time by Mustafa Ali. Now back to his roots, Dominic Dijakovic. Feast your eyes on that man as Mustafa Ali is going to tag in Dijakovic. And we're going to get our first look at this man, not T-Bar, Dominic Dijakovic here on the main roster. When he was down in NXT, he was absolutely impressive with moves like that. Look at that. Springboard clothesline. Dijakovic had some classics down in NXT. He was a part of a War Games matchup at one point. A phenomenal competitor from the Massachusetts independent area. Now here on the main roster teaming with a man he is once side by side with in Mustafa Ali. We figured they would never be on the same side again, but I guess expect the unexpected here at Backlash tonight. Seth Rollins in there with Dominic Dijakovic. That was kind of the X factor of this matchup. Rollins and Murphy 
As much as they wanted to get their hands on Mustafa Ali, they didn't know who else they were going to have to deal with here tonight. And that man ended up being Dijakovic as he hits a sit-out powerbomb. Very impressive, delivering it with impact, does Dijakovic. Rollins down and out, maybe in trouble. And Mustafa Ali with the tag. And looks like we're going to see Mustafa Ali in there with Seth Rollins once again. As we mentioned, these two fo fight, fo excuse me, faced off. If I can get it out. On the main event of Monday Night Raw, numerous weeks back, Mustafa Ali taking the fight to Seth Rollins on that night. Absolutely looked great. And it was on the winning side of things, which caused all of this situation in the first place. Rollins wants out. Look at this. Tags in Murphy. Rollins down and out. And Murphy hits him. Getting laid out with that springboard tornado DDT. That move has been very effective for Mustafa Ali the last number of weeks in action. Got to notice Mustafa Ali, we mentioned this on main event, but he's slowly but surely getting back to his old ways. The ways that were very much, you know, the ways that the WWE Universe loved to see. That made people impressed with Mustafa Ali in the first place. The good attitude, the new gear. It's old is new again. And what is still relevant and what is still impressive from Mustafa Ali. But Dominic Dijakovic's in there right now, but... As much as we want to hype up him and we got to appreciate his talents, there's no slouches on the other side of the ring. Murphy and Rollins, former tag team champions in their own right. Murphy's a former Cruiserweight champion, former NXT tag team champion. Seth Rollins, I mean, what a career he's had. WWE champion, Intercontinental champion, tag team champion, and an NXT champion himself. Seth Rollins has had a legendary career coming up on 10 years since his main roster debut. So we have Murphy and Ali back into this here. Just continuing where we left off on main event. Look at this. Oh, but Dijakovic got in there. But unfortunately, it kind of took the ball away for Mustafa Ali there. And now, even though, oh man, even though Murphy ate that, or ate that knee, he's got the upper hand on Mustafa Ali. Tags in Seth Rollins, but Ali, that's the man he wants. That's the man Seth Rollins wants. These guys want to get at each other here tonight. As Rollins brings Ali in, he's going for the... Oh, no, I was about to say going for the powerbomb, but Ali eats canvas. What is Seth Rollins looking for here? Ali, dazed and confused. Oh, just falls down to a knee. Ali is feeling tired. As Rollins... Uh, Insiguri... No! Ooh, Insiguri to the back of the head. Emphatic maneuver from the Messiah and just takes out the thorn in his side, Mustafa Ali. This is, of course, the first of two tag team matches we're going to see still coming up tonight. The WWE World Tag Team Championship is going to be on the line as Randy Orton and Riddle, RK Bro, look to get back the championships of the team that beat them for it a couple of weeks ago, the Viking Raiders. But Rollins, with that ripcord knee, lays out Dominic Dijakovic. And he tags in Murphy. Murphy looking to get him some of the big man. Oh no, Dijakovic may be in trouble. Mustafa Ali's on the outside. Ali eyeing up. Oh no, miss for the knee. Dijakovic sidestepping Murphy. Sends him into the corner. Murphy's about to feast his eyes on this impressive competitor. Oh, and he's going to go for a ride as well. This has got to be throwing Murphy and Rollins off their game a little bit. I mean, especially since everyone would figure that these two, Ali and Dijakovic, would be on the same side of things. Got to be shocked to see them working together here tonight. Ali's the legal man. Oh, look at this. He's eyeing up Buddy Murphy. Murphy's dazed. Ali, X-Factor there. Murphy eats canvas. Big time maneuver from Mustafa Ali. Murphy's down and out. Ali's going to the top rope. What is he going for? Oh, 5 4. We saw him hit that on main event. It ended him in victory. Into the cover. Dijakovic cuts off Rollins and Mustafa Ali and Dominic Dijakovic pick up a win over Murphy and Rollins. Did you see the look on Seth Rollins' face? He is pissed. Mustafa Ali shutting Seth Rollins up once again. With Dijakovic by his side, they make an impressive tag team victory here tonight. And Murphy and Seth Rollins, you gotta believe this won't be the last we hear from those two men. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Intercontinental.
Intercontinental Championship. Our next championship matchup is right here, right now at Backlash. The long-awaited Intercontinental Championship meet between the number one contender, Sheamus, who earned the right to challenge champion Shinsuke Nakamura right here tonight. This is going to be a strong style battle between two tough competitors. I can't wait to see who walks away with the Intercontinental Championship. It was a couple of weeks ago here on WWE Main Event where Sheamus took on Samoa Joe. It was a great matchup. We keep referring to it as a meeting of two bulls in that ring. In the end, it was the Celtic Warrior Sheamus with the bro kick, an emphatic statement sent to Shinsuke Nakamura. And he defeated Samoa Joe on that night to call himself the Intercontinental Champion's number one contender. The Intercontinental title, the only championship that Sheamus hasn't held. If he acquires that, he becomes a Grand Slam champion here in the WWE. He's been at the top of the mountain, WWE Champion, World Champion, United States Champion, Tag Team Champion, Money in the Bank winner, Royal Rumble match winner, big time WrestleMania main events, but he has never been the Intercontinental Champion. King of the Ring winner as well as we talk about the King of Strong Style. Here comes your Intercontinental Champion, Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura with an impressive list of accolades as well. Former NXT Champion, former Tag Team Champion, the current reigning Intercontinental Champion, the United States Champion, 2018 Royal Rumble match winner. Nakamura has been in the main events of WrestleMania. Nakamura has been a worldwide traveled competitor. Known as the King of Strong Styles, he's one of the toughest competitors to step inside the ring with. And this is a first time ever meeting, one-on-one, -on -one between Shinsuke Nakamura and Sheamus here tonight. Their paths have crossed in tag team action before, but they have never met one-on-one. -on -one. So for the first time ever, we are going to see Nakamura and Sheamus duke it out for the Intercontinental Gold right here tonight. I am pumped up for this one, Nakamura, with a couple of recent wins in his victories, or excuse me, in his history. Sheamus has been on a roll as well. We'll discuss that throughout the matchup. But it is time, ladies and gentlemen, for your next championship contest here tonight at Backlash. That beautiful gold and blue is on the line. The Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura defends that very championship against the number one contender and the Celtic Warrior Sheamus right here, right now. Let's send things down to the ring. Introducing the challenger from Dublin, Ireland, weighing in. 267 pounds, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus! And introducing the champion from Kyoto, Japan, weighing in at 220 pounds, he is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, King! There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Your official in-ring introductions for this championship affair on pay-per-view. Nakamura hands over the gold, but the question is, is he handing it over for the very last time? Will that man right there be walking away with the Intercontinental Championship? Will it be end new, or will it be end still? We're going to find out right now as the Intercontinental Championship matchup is underway as Backlash continues to roll on here tonight. The bell has sounded. It has been a great night of action so far. We are kicking off our second half with this Intercontinental Championship matchup. Still four matches, including this one to go. All championships going to be on the line. Collar and elbow here. These guys feeling each other out as Sheamus hits that impressive knee early. Sheamus kind of like, that was kind of like a sending a message knee, if you will, to the King of Strong Style to let him know he can hang in the ring. As we mentioned, this is the first time ever meeting. Nice Meteora from Nakamura from the top rope. I say first time ever meeting one-on-one. -on -one. These guys have never met one-on-one -on -one inside the ring before. Sheamus barely escaping. The dragon sleeper from Shinsuke Nakamura. These men have met in tag team action. Their paths have crossed, but it has never been just them two inside the squared circle. 
which makes th things very interesting because it makes it almost harder to scout your opponent when you really don't know that much what to be expecting in there. Kind of raises the stakes a little bit. Especially with the Intercontinental Championship on the line. Shame is pulling out a move there that we don't see him do often. From the second rope, jumping with that shoulder block, did the Celtic Warrior. Sheamus, as we mentioned, been on a roll the last couple of weeks. First, it was the win against Samoa Joe that earned him this matchup here tonight. And then we saw on tag team action a couple of weeks ago on main event, Sheamus and Jinder Mahal teaming up to defeat Finn Balor and the Intercontinental Champion Nakamura. Sheamus pinning Finn Balor on that night, but he did deliver a message and deliver that bro kick right to Nakamura moments before that match took an end. And it was this past week on main event, Sheamus and Cesaro going one-on-one, -on -one, and the Celtic Warrior picked up another win there. So Sheamus is riding a hot streak, heading into this matchup. As he is feeling out the crowd here in Detroit. Nakamura, on the other hand, as, well, Nakamura goes to the outside by way of the Celtic Warrior, but as I was about to mention, a recent retaining of his championship over Finn Balor a couple of weeks ago on Raw. His two went one-on-one. -on -one. He also picked up a victory a few weeks ago against Apollo Crews. So even though he's got that tag team loss, he didn't need the pinfall there. His last two singles matches, Nakamura was victorious. So both these guys looking pretty strong headed into this matchup here tonight. As they are taking the fight to the outside of the ring, Nakamura locking in an armbar. You can't put things away out there, but you can do just a little more damage when you're on the concrete. As Sheamus takes down Nakamura. The prestigious Intercontinental Championship on the line. So much writing, so much history on that very gold. Both these men will walk out of this pay-per-view, walk out of Detroit with the Intercontinental Championship. As we mentioned, Sheamus has never held that gold before. He's been a decorated competitor in his WWE career. He won the 2012 Royal Rumble, the 2010 King of the Ring, Money in the Bank winner in 2015. Nakamura, or excuse me, Sheamus, been the United States Champion, he's been a Tag Team Champion, World Heavyweight Champion, the WWE Champion, which he won just months after making his debut on Monday Night Raw. Back in 2009, Sheamus has had an impressive career, but the one thing that has eluded him all this time has been the Intercontinental Championship. On the other hand, Nakamura, in his several years at this point in the WWE, has held multiple championships as well, NXT Champion. Down in NXT during his initial run with that promotion. He's been United States Champion. Currently your Intercontinental Champion, of course. He's been Tag Team Champion. He's the winner of the 2018 Royal Rumble. He's even the SmackDown main event to WrestleMania a few years back against the phenomenal AJ Styles, who we will see later tonight for the WWE Championship. AJ Styles, of course, will be contesting for the WWE title once again later. Sheamus, look at this, picking Nakamura up in the air, brings him down. Looked like he was going to go for a suplex there, but decides to turn it out. Had a little bit more leverage, a little bit more impact on that landing for Nakamura. Oh, and Sheamus counters out. Great matchup so far we are seeing. Very competitive with that Intercontinental title on the line. Neither man wanted to give it in. Nobody wants to leave Detroit empty-handed here tonight. Nakamura, let's see what he's going to pull out. Tries going for a suplex of his own. Oh, Sheamus gets out of it. And instead, German suplex. Not something we see too often in the repertoire of Sheamus. But found himself in the position off that counter. And definitely took it. Now a little bit of the ground and pound. We'll see this out of the Celtic Warrior every now and then. Nakamura's the king of strong style. But Sheamus is a hard, hard hitter Excuse me, in that ring as well. Gotta say probably the stronger of the two is the Celtic Warriors. Nakamura, look at this, he's got Sheamus in a predicament. Knee to face from Nakamura. And that's a knockout blow, and I can't see anybody getting up from that, but Sheamus at 2.9 gets the shoulder up. Nakamura thought he put the final nail in the coffin, thought he retained the Intercontinental Championship. Sheamus got the shoulder up at the last second. He stead, instead goes for the submission hold here. He's got the arm in and the leg absolutely stretching out the Celtic Warrior. If Sheamus taps out, his Intercontinental Championship aspirations go up in a poof, but instead he's able to get out of that barely there, but you know the damage is done after a move like that. Sheamus still going to be wary after that knee to the face King Sasha maneuver a few moments ago. 
Sheamus trying to get back into things here. Nakamura may be in trouble. Oh, look at this. Sheamus has got him up. Nakamura's going for a ride. He eats the canvas to the back. Nakamura's taking a couple of hard falls in this contest. Sheamus looking to become the new Intercontinental Champion. Nakamura gets the shoulder up somehow, some way. What a matchup here we are seeing. What a great night of action it has been inside that ring. I can't believe we still have more to go. You want to talk about a first pay-per-view here on Universe Mode. You are getting it tenfold here tonight. What a banger of an event this has been. Nakamura picking up Sheamus. Nakamura, as we just mentioned, he's taken a couple of hard falls so far in this matchup. And Sheamus is looking to deliver another as he's showcasing the strength. And he sends Nakamura down to the mat below. Nakamura may be in trouble. He threw some of his best offense moments ago. Sheamus survived it. Sheamus was stalking him there. Nakamura counters. Oh, Sheamus counters now. Naka or excuse me, Nakamura hits a knee by Sheamus. Sheamus has gone back to that bicycle knee a few times in this matchup. Definitely aided him on occasion. Oh, look at this. Sheamus, backbreaker into the bro kick. Sheamus with the bro kick on oh, Nakamura. That, no, Nakamura gets the shoulder up. Sheamus hitting in his exclamation point finishing maneuver. Sheamus with the bro kick. It does not do justice. Nakamura gets the shoulder up. But wait a minute. Backbreaker number two. Sheamus spins him out. Bro kick number two. That's got to do it. There is no way in hell I could see Nakamura breaking out of this thing. And there you have it. One bro kick was not enough. But he went back to the well. And that time it pays him dividends. What a great hard-hitting affair between Nakamura and Sheamus. But after that matchup, the Celtic Warrior finally checking the one title that was eluding him all his career off his list. Sheamus, look at that right there. The bro kick. And here you go, number two from the Celtic Warrior. Sheamus picking up the victory right here tonight at Backlash. What a victory for the Celtic Warrior. Sheamus acquires the Intercontinental Championship for the very first time. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Raw Women's Championship. It is WWE. Women's Championship time here at Backlash. The long-awaited meet inside the ring between the boss, Sasha Banks, and the WWE Women's Champion, Bianca Belair. This will be the third time they ever face off one-on-one, -on -one, and they got quite the history against each other. It was a couple of weeks ago on WWE Main Event where Sasha Banks defeated Rhea Ripley as well as Candice LeRae in the triple threat contest to earn the right to fight Bianca Belair for the WWE Women's Championship here tonight. There you see Sasha Banks. The bank statement locked in tight. Candice LeRae had no choice but to tap out. Sasha Banks absolutely earning the right to be here in this ring in Detroit this evening for the WWE Women's Championship on the line. Bianca Belair, the last few times we've saw her, she's coming off a couple of victories over Shotzi inside of the ring. Bianca's riding a high, Sasha Banks riding a high, both these women at the top of their game. It is going to be very interesting to see who walks out of this one, the WWE Women's Champion. And here comes the Women's Champion herself, Bianca Belair. As we mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, this is the second time these two women have ever faced off, but most notably, it was one year and one day ago today where Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks met in the main event of night one of WrestleMania 37. It was one of the greatest women's matches in our great sports history. And on that night, though a valiant effort from the boss Sasha Banks, she lost her championship to the EST of WWE, Bianca Belair. That was their first ever meeting. These two met again on the October 1st, 2021 edition of SmackDown where Sasha Banks would pick up the victory over Belair on that night. 
Consider this your rubber match between the two women. They both earned one victory over each other. But tonight, who will gain the second? Will it be N New for Sasha Banks? Or will it be N Still for the EST of WWE and the current holder of the WWE Women's World Championship? Let's send it down to the ring. Introducing the challenger from Boston, Massachusetts, Sasha Banks. And introducing the champion from Knoxville, Tennessee, the Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Belair. That is what is all on the line here tonight. The white, gold, and red that Bianca possesses in her hands right now. She passes off to our official as we show the prize to the challenger. This is it, ladies and gentlemen, your rubber match for the WWE Women's Championship. The earned and rightful challenger and decorated champion, the boss, Sasha Banks, versus the WWE Women's Champion, the EST of WWE, Bianca Belair. We are underway here at Backlash. As Bianca right off the bat with a German suplex over Sasha Banks. As we mentioned, Sasha Banks defeating Candice LeRae and Rhea Ripley in that triple threat matchup a couple of weeks ago. Tapping out Candice. So she absolutely earned the right to be here tonight. Bianca, as the, on the other hand, as we mentioned as well, coming off two victories over the up-and-comer Shotzi inside the squared circle. One on Raw, one on main event. Two phenomenal matches. Shotzi put up a great effort against the women's champion, but in the end, Bianca Belair, both times, was just too much for Shotzi to handle. We mentioned those wins, not only because that's how we got here tonight, but to once again point out that both of these women are coming in here with momentum. Both of these women are coming in at the top of their game. And as we mentioned, this is the rubber match. First, it was WrestleMania 37, where Bianca Belair beat Sasha Banks when the lights were on bright in the main event. And on that night, she won the Women's Championship. Then it was back on October the 1st, 2021, where they met in a WrestleMania 37 rematch where Sasha Banks defeated Bianca Belair. Now, one year and one day after the WrestleMania 37 matchup, these two women meet again for the championship on pay-per-view as Sasha Banks comes off the ropes with a Meteora, a classic maneuver from the boss. Cover a little bit early to put away Bianca Belair. We know how tough she is in that ring. She's proved it in recent history in those matches versus Shotzi, but she's proved it all throughout her WWE career thus far. Just go and watch the previous matches versus Sasha Banks. You will see just how tough Bianca Belair is, but you'll see just how resilient Sasha Banks can be as well. A couple of knees into the corner. Sasha going up. She goes for the splash, which has become a signature maneuver for the boss, but Bianca gets out of the way and just showing her strength here. One thing she clearly has over Sasha Banks is the strength advantage. Bianca Belair is a jack of all trades in that ring. And one thing, like we mentioned, she definitely has over Sasha Banks is the strength. But Sasha Banks may be a little bit more faster. She may have the speed just a little bit over the EST. If I had to pick one thing, it's got to be the speed. Both these women need to play into their strong suits here to aid them in this contest. We go to a collar and elbow in this matchup. We go to another one. Bianca Belair's definitely got the strength, as we mentioned, but Sasha able to take her over with the drop kick. Sasha Banks, a former decorated champion, as we mentioned. She was an NXT Women's Champion. She was a Raw Women's Champion. She was a Women's Tag Team Champion, SmackDown Women's Champion. Sasha Banks has done it all in this WWE company. But she wants to be back on the top of the mountain again and win the Women's World Championship of the WWE. The woman standing in her way is the current champion, Bianca Belair, Sasha once bank. It's Sasha Banks once again, excuse me, going to the top rope, goes for the splash, but for the second time, Bianca Belair has had scouted. Bianca Belair has recently picked up a couple of wins with high-risk maneuvers herself. Remember, she used that Macho Man-esque elbow numerous times on Shotzi. One time getting the victory off it. Ooh, Bianca Belair with that standing shooting star press. That could hurt her ribs. As Bianca Blair's going to the top rope here, she could be scouting Sasha, as I mentioned, for that elbow drop, she is! Bianca has picked up a recent win with that maneuver. She's headed back up with it. One elbow drop, this time Bianca Blair. oh, 450 splash on Sasha Banks. 
Very impressive from the EST. Oh my god, she got her! Beyond... Wow! I, I'm a little shocked, I gotta be honest. I mean, that was a great matchup these last few minutes, but I felt like it was just getting started. Bianca Belair, that was a qu in quick fashion. It was the standing shooting star, followed by the elbow, followed by that. The 450 splash lands flush. And Bianca, just like that, defeats the ball, Sasha Banks. I'm shocked. I'm not shocked that Bianca won this match, I'm just shocked at how fast Sasha Banks went down, but nonetheless, the EST of the WWE is still on top of the women's division, and is still on top of the mountain as your WWE Women's Champion, Bianca Belair leaves Backlash with the gold here tonight. Well, nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, we still got a couple more championship matches coming your way. It is now time for the rematch we've all been waiting for. The WWE World Tag Team Championships on the line. RK Bro versus the Viking Raiders. And there is one half of RK Bro and one half of the former WWE World Tag Team Champions, Matt Riddle. It was a few weeks back on Raw, the new era begun with a big time main event between RK Bro, who had been World Tag Team Champions for nearly 10 months, defending them against Eric and Ivar, the Viking Raiders. It was a great tag team matchup from both ends of the field, but in the end, Viking Raiders picked up the victory, pinning that man right there, Riddle, to become the new WWE World Tag Team Champions. Now tonight we see the rematch, Randy Orton and Riddle looking to get back into the winning ways in the tag team division and looking to get back to the top and regain the gold that they lost a number of weeks ago to Eric and Ivar. There is one half of your challengers, Matt Riddle of RK Bro, and here comes the other half. Future Hall of Famer, the Viper, the Apex Predator, Randy Orton has arrived. They may have lost... The World Tag Team Championships a couple of weeks ago, but Riddle and Randy Orton recently picking up a couple of W's in singles action on WWE Main Event. Riddle picking up a win over Chad Gable a few weeks ago. And then more recently, Randy Orton went one-on-one -on -one with the up-and-coming Austin Theory. And Randy Orton absolutely just obliterating and bloodying Austin Theory in that matchup. Clearly showing an a little bit of an aggressive side and clearly showing he's ready to get gold back around the waist of himself as well as his tag team partner. So you can't say they're coming in with no momentum and it's all Viking Raiders because Orton and Riddle have gotten their hand raised in a recent victory. And if you remember, the last time we saw the Viking Raiders inside the squared circle, they actually picked up a loss. It was a tag team matchup against Danny Burch and Uni Lorcan. And in the end, Burch and Lorcan knocked off the World Tag Team Champions. And we mentioned then, and we'll mention it again, with Birch and Lorcan recently defeating the World Tag Team Champions, you gotta think whoever wins this matchup may just have those two bald bastards waiting for them. But nonetheless, we gotta talk about right here, right now, we can't look past tonight. It's our first Universe Mode pay-per-view. What a great night it has been thus far. We still got more championship matches coming your way, Featuring this one right here, right now. Randy Orton's had a decorated career. He's held every championship in the book. But he's looking to once again have another World Tag Team Championship run under his name. And he wants to do it with that man right next to his side, Matt Riddle. But can they get through? Two of the toughest son of a guns in the square circle today. Eric Ivar. The Viking Raiders or better known as the WWE World Tag Team Champions. Even in defeat recently against Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, Eric and, I Eric and Ivar have impressed. Again with that win over Randy Orton and Riddle a few weeks ago in what was a great tag team main event. Under pressure, they were able to get the victory and able to knock off the near 10-month champions off their pedestal. 
and coming off a loss a few weeks ago to Danny Burks and Odie Lorcan, you gotta think Eric and Ivar may feel like they have something to prove tonight against Orton and Riddle. They may be feeling like people may be looking at their win over RK Bro like it was a fluke. If they can't get past teams such as Birch and Lorcan, no disrespect, how can they get past the Viking, or excuse me, how can they get past the Apex Predator Randy Orton and Riddle? Viking Raiders not only looking to retain their World Tag Team Championships tonight, but looking to prove that their win wasn't a fluke and looking to stake their claim at the top of the mountain in the Tag Team Division. I am locked in and I am ready for this contest. Those beautiful World Tag Team Championships of the WWE on the line. This is your co-main event to Backlash. The World Tag Team Championships in prominent spot. Your challengers, Randy Orton, Riddle, former 10th month champions, RK Bro, and your champions, Eric Ivar, the Viking Raiders. This is going to be a great tag team matchup. We've talked about how important the tag team division was going to be here in Universe Mode, and we are showcasing that statement right here, right now. Two amazing tag teams with prestigious World Tag Team Gold on the line. This is your co-main event to Backlash, and we are underway for the World Tag Team Championships. Very excited and very interested to see who's going to walk out of this. So much writing on whoever wins and loses here. For Riddle and Orton, where will they go from here if they cannot get the championships back in a rematch against Eric and Ivar? They were a team that came together a bit unceremoniously last summer, and through that they were able to win the World Tag Team Championships. On the other hand, as we mentioned, Eric and Ivar looking to prove that their win against RK Bro wasn't a fluke as Riddles go to the top rope. Look at that! Beautiful maneuver, picture perfect from Riddle on Eric is going to tag in the Viper Randy Orton here. And oh, oh wow, wait a minute, breaking news ladies and gentlemen, we got an injury report for the boss Sasha Banks, broken ribs during her matchup with Bianca Belair, four to eight weeks recovery time for Sasha Banks, wow that is horrible breaking news, I, honestly that kind of makes sense as to why Bianca Belair was able to put Sasha Banks away in, in such early fashion, I mean she hit that standing shooting star splash, or student star splash, excuse me, shooting star press, Followed by the elbow drop, followed by the 450 splash. Guess all the impact of those three maneuvers lined up in a row. Just hitting Sasha in the right spot. Broken a couple of ribs. Unintentionally, of course, but Sasha Banks, I mean, makes sense as to why she went down so fast. Horrible news to hear. We wish Sasha Banks the best in her recovery over the next four to eight weeks, suffering from those broken ribs. But nonetheless, let's get back to our tag team matchup here in the ring. Riddle hitting a beautiful springboard moonsault on Eric. RK Bro looking good so far as the challengers here tonight. Eric just slapping Riddle in the face. Like we mentioned, man, they're looking to prove that that win a couple of weeks ago in the main event on Raw. The spotlight was there. The titles were on the line. They got the win in the big matchup. And they've got the... Oh, look at this. A little bit. I got to cut myself off. Tag team maneuver. Picture perfect. From the Viking Raiders. I was about to mention they've gotten big wins before. It isn't the first time that Eric and Ivar have been at the top of the mountain. As Riddle hits the knee on Ivar. The Viking Raiders have been tag team champions before. Raw tag team champions. NXT tag team champions. They've been in the big match. They've been in the big show. But it's been a while since they got that big win. As Randy Orton is in here with the neck breaker. They certainly impressed in the main event a couple of weeks ago. Like we said, Riddle was the one that took the downfall in that matchup. I'm sure Riddle feels like he has something to prove letting the team down a few weeks ago. I'm sure he doesn't want to get pinned here tonight and have another loss in his history books, in his record book, against Eric and Ivar. Riddle goes for the kick and Ivar just takes him out. It's going to be a very interesting dynamic. It was a very interesting dynamic. In that initial meeting a few weeks ago, Eric and Ivar, just interesting strategies in that ring. Ivar can move, he's fast, he's agile. Clearly he's got the size and strength. You can almost say a very complete athlete in that ring is Ivar. Eric, on the other hand, 
An MMA background can absolutely just strike you and beat you down from nowhere. From out of nowhere, I should say. They make a great combo inside of that ring. Very hard team to prepare for. That is why they're the World Tag Team Champions at the current moment. As Eric looked for the pinfall, but Randy Orton got in the way. Oh, look at this. Eric taking out Randy Orton. Just clotheslines him down. And Ivar into the ring. Splash to Riddle. That splash is actually what did the damage to Riddle a few weeks ago on Raw, aiding Viking Raiders in winning the World Tag Team Championship gold. Randy Orton's down and out. Let's turn it into a handicap match momentarily. Viking Raiders could look to capitalize on Riddle here and pick up the victory. As Eric and Ivar have been in control the last few minutes over RK Bro. He just comes in with the leg drop. These guys are looking real good as the World Tag Team Champions in this match. And like we mentioned, oh, Riddle belly to belly, able to get the big man off his feet. And fouls up with a kick. As we mentioned, Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan. They defeated the World Tag Team Champions, the Viking Raiders, a few weeks ago. You got to think they got their eyes on this matchup here. As Riddle, submission hold in on Ivar. He's in the wrong corner, though. Eric able to get in there. And there's Randy Orton now. A little payback on Eric. With that drop kick. But Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, like we said, they got to have their eyes on this matchup. Whoever wins, they could be next in line to challenge for the World Tag Team titles. And it's looking like it's going to be RK Bro. Riddle's... Got Ivar in that stranglehold right there. Ivar is on the verge of tapping out. Eric nowhere to be found and he's down and out on the outside of the ring. He is wrenching it in. Look at that. Oh, Ivar breaking the hold. And a couple of shots from the big man will definitely let you loose. Almost came close to having new WWE World Tag Team Champions there. For the second time, Randy Orton and Riddle, and there's the tag. Riddle's been in for a few minutes. Tag made to Orton, but you see Riddle was kind of in the way of Orton there, unintentionally. And Orton was able to, well, now he's back in control, but Ivar got the cheap shot with that clothesline. Randy Orton here. It's kind of a handicap match at the current moment as Riddle's down and out. Randy Orton is the fresher of the man's, and he takes control. Look at that. Nice maneuver there from Randy Orton. Randy Orton, the biggest veteran of this matchup. As Ivar tags in Eric, Ivar's down and out, and now we go from Randy Orton to Ivar to Randy Orton and Eric one-on-one -on -one as Riddle and Ivar are both down and out from the punishment of this tag team bout thus far. Talked about Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan. They got to be next up in line. But what about some of the other tag teams we got in our tag team division as of late? Lucha House Party from the Cruiserweight division. I'm sure they're looking at this matchup. We're going to get their hands on the, on the champions very soon. We have Murphy and Seth Rollins. We saw Dominic Dijakovic make his return earlier in night. Team up with Mustafa Ali. Hey, there's a possibility there. I'd possibly become the tag team champions. You never know. No matter what, whoever's leaving Backlash as the World Tag Team Champions is certainly going to have a line long of possible challengers in the future. Riddle is back in with Eric in this contest. Riddle, I'm sure, is still feeling the effects. He was in there for quite a, quite a while in this matchup, taking a beating from the Viking Raiders. Riddle, oh, look at that big-time counter from Eric. Riddle's still not feeling 100% after getting the beat down thus far. Now he's in the wrong corner. He's in Viking Raiders' corner. We got a tag made to Ivar here. What's the big man looking to do? Shoots him up. Oh, we saw this earlier. Go to the well with what works. Viking Raiders in full control over RK Bro at the current moment in time. Great tag team matchup here. The World Tag Team Championships on the line. These guys are fighting tooth and nail for it. Look at this tag made to Eric. From the top with the leg drop. What a fall away. Randy Orton's in and he's able to break it up. But what a hard fall. Long way down. Randy Orton breaks up the counter. Or excuse me, breaks up the pin. But he just got taken out. He wasn't watching his back. Orton's down and out. Eric's stalking Riddle. Look at this. Picks him up and drops him with the kick. A little bit of that MMA background out of Eric. And we got a cover. Ivar's keeping his eyes on Orton. Viking Raiders. 
pick up the victory. Eric and Ivor win the rematch. Proving that they are able to defeat RK Bro and that they can hang once again on top of the tag team division. Proving that the initial win wasn't a fluke and that they are here to stay as the WWE World Tag Team Champions. With moves like that, who the hell is going to stop Eric and Ivar? Viking Raiders still atop the tag team division. It is a first time ever meeting in the Backlash main event for the WWE Championship. The almighty Bobby Lashley versus the phenomenal AJ Styles. AJ Styles picked up this opportunity by winning the WWE Championship number one contenders tournament over the last couple of weeks in the first round. It was the recall knee over Ricochet that aided AJ Styles in the victory, using Ricochet's own move against him, where the phenomenal one would advance to the semifinals on that night. In the semifinals, he went one-on-one -on -one with the Archer of Infamy, Damian Priest. It was a great matchup that showed a valiant effort from both men, but in the end, the phenomenal AJ Styles, pulling out moves he hadn't done in years and using Damian Priest's own move against him, hit the lights, was able to get the victory over Damian Priest. AJ Styles continued his strategy on that night of using his own opponents of finishing movers against them and throwing them off their game for AJ Styles to pick up the win. AJ Styles would then move on to the finals, where he met the Claymore King himself, Drew McIntyre. And what was an all-timer classic this past Monday Night on Raw, these two men fought tooth and nail with Drew McIntyre, almost on a few occasions, putting AJ Styles away with moves such as a not one, but two Claymore kicks. AJ Styles would survive the offense from Drew McIntyre. AJ pulled out some of his most phenomenal moves, aiding him in survival over Drew McIntyre. McIntyre uncharacteristically would take it to the top rope, but in the end it wasn't enough as AJ Styles hoisted the big man in the air and was able to lay him out with the Styles Flash. On that matchup, AJ Styles was able to punch his ticket to the Backlash main event, winning the matchup. But as for him, he was sent a message by Hurt Business leader Bobby Lashley as he sent one of the Hurt Business members, Cedric Alexander, down to the ring to send his message and to do a number on the Phenomenal One, AJ Styles. The almighty WWE Champion Bobby Lashley, who has reigned atop the WWE for nearly a year, returned to action this past Monday Night on Raw and made an impactful statement over the Samoan submission machine Samoa Joe, Bobby Lashley, with AJ Styles in his hindsight, made sure everyone remembered just who was on top of the mountain in the WWE. Bobby Lashley, the WWE Champion, they call him the Almighty One, the leader of the Hurt Business. He is looking to put the Hurt on AJ Styles and walk away, still the WWE Champion here tonight. It is main event time here at Backlash. We've waited all night. What a great event it's been. But it is time for the most prestigious prize in our business today. The WWE World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. And here comes your challenger. Your number one contender. The phenomenal AJ Styles. Multiple time WWE Champion. Intercontinental Champion, United States Champion, AJ Styles has had a lot in the WWE and he's looking to add to his list of accomplishments here tonight. Will AJ Styles be the one to dethrone the almighty dominant reign of Bobby Lashley? He earned the right to be the number one contender by defeating Ricochet, by defeating Damian Priest, and by defeating Drew McIntyre. Just days removed from his meeting with Drew McIntyre and an assault from Cedric Alexander is AJ Styles 100% going into this main event matchup 
or is AJ Styles still feeling the effects from this past Monday's war? Nonetheless, AJ Styles will give it his all. Championship opportunities, they don't come around every day. And when they do, you gotta make the most of them. Even if you got the almighty one standing in your path. Here is your WWE Champion. The almighty Bobby Lashley. With wins in his championship reign. Over the lights of Drew McIntyre, Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, and more, Bobby Lashley has reigned atop the WWE for the better part of a year. One of the most dominant WWE champions we've seen in recent memory. Ever since becoming a member of the Hurt Business and becoming the leader of the faction, Bobby Lashley has received a fresh coat of paint, revitalized his career, and became one of the most dominant and feared competitors to ever step foot inside the squared circle. But when he's holding the WWE Championship, the title that everybody wants, the title that everybody dreams about, who will dare step foot inside the ring with that man right there? Eight men were given an opportunity, but AJ Styles is the only one who came out on the other side, and it is time to meet your maker, the main event of Backlash, is right here, right now, for the most prestigious prize, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing the challenger, from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 218 pounds, the Phenomenal AJ And introducing the champion from Colorado Springs, Colorado, weighing in at 273 pounds. He is the WWE Champion, the almighty Bobby Lashley. Who will reign supreme? Who will be the face of the WWE, who will fly the frag of the franchise. The phenomenal AJ Styles, the almighty Bobby Lashley, the WWE Championship, Little Caesars Arena, Detroit, Michigan, Backlash. The moment is here, the time is now, the bell has rung, and we are underway with your main event. Who is gonna walk away and lead the WWE as world champion. This will be no easy task for either competitor. As dominant as Bobby Lashley has been, AJ Styles is a different competitor than Goldberg. He's a different competitor than Drew McIntyre. And he's different from Brock Lesnar. AJ Styles will bring something that Bobby Lashley has, but he doesn't have as much, and that's the speed and agility. Bobby Lashley is an amazing competitor. But when you think of Lashley inside the squared circle, you reference him with his strength, his size. He has speed and agility, but when you match it up to the phenomenal one, it does not match. AJ Styles needs to use his offense of innovation against Bobby Lashley smart in this matchup. Use the speed, use the agility, use the quick maneuvers, and strike when you can. Bobby Lashley, on the other hand, needs to grab a hold of AJ Styles like we're seeing here. Wear him down. Keep him on the mat. Beat him down and dominate. And Bobby Lashley will still be your WWE Champion. No MVP. No Cedric Alexander. No Shelton Benjamin. Her business not allowed at ringside for this main event matchup. There's one on one. One fall to a finish for the WWE Championship here tonight. AJ Styles. Very interested to see how he plays this matchup, what his strategy will be. I believe taking it to the air will be his best bet. But Bobby Lashley, on the other hand, may have that scouted as AJ Styles hits a beautiful arm drag. And it was smart to deliver it from the top rope. Adding more insult to injury. AJ fouls it up quick with a frog splash. He's going for the quick cover. Will AJ Styles knock off the almighty champion? Way too early, though. 
Smart offense from AJ Styles. He took Bobby Lashley where he's uncomfortable. The top rope. Hit him with the arm drag. AJ followed it up with one of his signature maneuvers. Hitting that frog splash. Something AJ delivers in beautiful fashion. But just way too early to put Lashley away. And you see Lashley there using his size, his strength to his advantage. The belly to belly suplex on AJ Styles. But you can't turn your back on the phenomenal one as we see what happens right there. Lashley taking a tumble to the outside of the ring. AJ Styles looking on in the WWE Champion. Bobby Lashley a little bit west for weary here. And AJ jumping out of the ring. Hits the phenomenal forearm variation from the ring to the outside below. It's delivered with a lot more impact when AJ hits the springboard first and nails it inside the ring. But coming down from the top and crashing on your opponent like that still hits hard. Definitely going to be a move that Bobby Lashley needs to pay attention to and try to shake off here in the early ways of this matchup. AJ follows it up with another forearm. Very smart to stick where you can. AJ's looked very good against Lashley so far. He's definitely had the advantage more. And you see the offense that AJ Styles is delivering. High-flying maneuvers. Bobby Lashley has really got to grab a hold of AJ Styles, keep him grounded here. As he does there, throws him in there, and throws him down to the ropes. Or excuse me, throws him down to the map below. And the ground and pound from the dominant, Bobby Lashley. And Lashley, look at this, going a little uncharacteristic here. Lashley from the top rope, hits a splash. That's got to be, that's smart from Bobby Lashley. Something AJ Styles clearly wasn't going to expect. From Lashley as he locks in a submission hold here. Bit of an Anaconda Vice submission on the Phenomenal One. A little bit early, AJ Styles able to use the knees to break Bobby Lashley off. But you got to give the Almighty One credit. He threw AJ Styles off his game, pulling out something new out of his repertoire with that splash from the top rope. And that's a 250 pound man coming down, crashing on you. That's going to knock the wind out of you, at least for a few moments. AJ Styles is still fighting. Big moves like that are really going to pay dividends as we go into the championship rounds in this matchup. It's still early on. These guys got a lot of fight in them, especially when gold's on the line. This is a huge match for both of these men. Lashley's legacy will continue to grow if he walks out of backlash with the WWE Championship. This reign will continue to go down in history. On the other hand, AJ Styles has not held the WWE Championship. Since 2018, it's been quite some time since the Phenomenal One was the franchise player here as Bobby Lashley's got AJ Styles up and early on hits him with that Dominator. Lashley laying out Styles and Styles, I gotta believe off adrenaline here, is back up and he's looking to lock in the calf crusher. But AJ Styles, that's the same mistake he made on Drew McIntyre. We saw that on Raw where AJ Styles, he went for the calf crusher but he was way too close to the ropes there. And it could have been, it could have paid dividends. Might not have put Bobby Lashley away, but definitely could have put the Hurt on the leader of the Hurt business, but he was way too close to the ropes. AJ's in control here. He hits that frog splash again on Bobby Lashley. You keep adding up moves like that, you're definitely going to wear down. The champion is AJ Styles off the second rope, follows it up with another splash, trying to knock the win. Out of the almighty Lashley. We know what great shape Bobby Lashley is in. The size and strength, but also the cardio of Lashley. Absolutely incredible. We know he can go the distance, especially against somebody like the phenomenal one here who almost had Bobby Lashley off that series of high-risk maneuvers. So a frog splash, a splash from the second rope, that springboard moonsault, AJ Styles going high-risk, high-reward, but you got to throw it all on the line with such an opportunity at stake. AJ goes for the drop kick. Lashley sidesteps some very smart maneuver from Lashley. He scattered the drop kick, something AJ Styles does quite often, and he was able to drop him with that clothesline. Lashley, hurt lock. This move put away Samoa Joe this past Monday Night Raw, roll, and it's put away a list of others. It's AJ Styles next on the list. Bobby Lashley's got it locked in tight. AJ's go. No, I was about to say AJ's about to go. Look at that. Breaking the hold of Bobby Lashley. AJ able to slip out of it. Lashley put away so many competitors with that very maneuver. The Hurt Lock, one of the most feared submission holds in the business today. I gotta believe AJ might have been put away off that Hurt Lock. 
had we not been still a little bit early into this matchup. We're starting to get deeper, and as we get deeper, these competitors will become more fatigued. The moves will start catching up to them. There's also the chance Bobby Lashley may not have had that in full strength. As AJ Styles, look at this, phenomenal forearm! AJ Styles hitting the phenomenal forearm. That's the knockout blow. He's going to be the new WWE champion. Bobby Lashley gets the shoulder up at 2.9. Smart for AJ Styles to go for the phenomenal forearm so fast after the hurt lock. As he goes to the top rope here, AJ Styles knows he may be in trouble. AJ goes tilt to whirl, but Lashley gets out of the way. Lashley getting out of the way, and he sends him to the mat. You saw AJ Styles pick up a sense of urgency after he got locked in that hurt lock there. Lashley going for another submission hold. Trying to make the challenger fade away here on pay-per-view. AJ Styles barely surviving. All oh, you see he's getting that knee. That's how he got out of it earlier. Smart to go back with what works for the phenomenal one. AJ may feel he's a little bit in trouble. He may be feeling the damage after that hurt lock. We saw him hit the phenomenal forearm. Things are starting to pick up here in this matchup. Both men may be feeling a sense of urgency after eating each other's finishing maneuvers. Lashley using his strength over AJ and throws him across the ring. You see the sweat starting to drip as we get into the championship rounds in this contest. These guys are fighting tooth and nail for the top prize in our business today, the WWE Championship Gold. Lashley in the corner. What is the phenomenal one gonna look to do? Took too long there. The Bobby, La the Almighty one. Excuse me. Bobby Lashley is in control. And he sends AJ Styles to the outside. You gotta watch here because things just get a little more dangerous when you're on the outside of the square circle instead of in it. Bobby Lashley could be looking to put the hurt on AJ Styles as he does. Just throws him on the floor. AJ almost hitting the ring post there. That could have paid. It could have been very dangerous for AJ Styles as he's trying to fight back here. A little bit of an arm drag on the outside. Oh, man, these guys are fighting tooth and nail back and forth. They're on the outside of the ring. Lashley is beating down AJ Styles. You can feel the, the tension starting to rise, the sense of urgency out of these two competitors. This match can end on count at, of course. Lashley would retain the WWE Championship there. Not something Lashley's really going for. He's, he's so confident. And he's so dominant in that ring. Lashley, not a guy who really goes for the disqualifications or the countouts to retain his championship. You see he's breaking the count there. He could be going. I oh, know he breaks the count. He's going back for AJ Styles. But he had his back turned as AJ takes him out. AJ Styles, of course, can't win the WWE Championship on countout. You guys know the rules. He's going to have to get Bobby Lashley back inside the ring if he wants to walk away as your new WWE Championship this evening. AJ picking up Lashley on the outside of the ring. This guy's been out here for a good minute now. AJ Styles sending Lashley to the ring post. That could spell trouble for the almighty one. Surprised he's not busted open after eating the cold hard steel. Hitting the ring post off a couple of the maneuvers AJ Styles has already hit in this match, including a phenomenal forearm. Lashley's got to watch he doesn't suffer a concussion here in this WWE Championship defense as these guys are just brawling on the outside of the ring right down the timekeeper's area. AJ's feeling it right now. Look at this. He's trying to turn the tables on Bobby Lashley. A little bit of grounded pound from the phenomenal one. We know he's got an aggressive side. We've seen it over the years. It's what paid AJ Styles dividends in the past. There's a reason he's been WWE Champion in the past. Lashley once again breaking the count. He's clearly got something he wants to see AJ Styles eat out here. But AJ throwing Lashley right in the table. But Lashley's still in it. Oh, not on the outside of the ring. Bobby Lashley's going for the suplex on the outside of the ring. Letting the blood rush to AJ Styles' head. Very important to note. As this is just going to deja even more as AJ Styles' lower back has got to be killing him at this point. As he eats the floor and out eats the rights. From our WWE Champion, but AJ still got fight in him. You can't keep somebody down when the stakes are so high. What is it going to take for one of these men to just get put down here tonight? AJ trying to keep the fight on Bobby Lashley. We saw that for him here. We see a flurry of offense for the Phenomenal One. Bobby Lashley may be in trouble. Lashley is dazed. AJ's going out. AJ's going out. 
Springboard, phenomenal forearm number two. AJ into the cover. We have a new WWE champion of the world. Not one, but two phenomenal forearms. Punches the first class ticket to success. Bobby Lashley has been knocked off the top of the mountain. AJ Styles is the face of the franchise once again. One phenomenal forearm didn't do it justice. But two did. And AJ Styles is your WWE Champion. For the first time in a long time, AJ Styles is world champion of the WWE. Thank you for joining us here tonight at Backlash. It was an extraordinary event. And I can't wait to see you all for Monday Night Raw and the aftermath of such a historic Backlash event. Thank you and good night everybody.